The chief of the NDRF, Mr. S. N. Pradhan, joins us live right now in Republic. Sir, thank you so much for sparing out your time and talking to us, sir. Are we battle ready? What is it that you would want to tell all our viewers, particularly those who are watching you, who want to know what possibly are our preparations for Cyclone Yas that could be making its landfall as early as tomorrow, sir? Well, Deepti, the first thing I'd like to share with all the viewers across the country is that this is one of the biggest operations in the recent uh, memory of as far as cyclones go on the eastern coast. The last big cyclone was two years ago in 2019. That was the cyclone Phoney, where we had deputed 50 teams in Odisha, about 30 odd teams in West Bengal. This time, the deputation is of a higher order. Now there are 52 teams across Odisha and as many as 45 teams in West Bengal. In effect, whatever was demanded by the states, respective states, has been given without any uh, cutback. So all the teams are on ground now, and as we speak, uh, the evacuations are going on. Uh, the reports that last came in from the state to governments, two and a half uh, lakh people, nearly two and a half lakh have been evacuated in Odisha. Odisha. And I understand that more than eight and a half lakhs have been evacuated in uh, West Bengal. So evacuation is going to be the lifeblood of this whole process because remember the prime minister, the home minister, the uh, union uh, home secretary, as well as the cabinet secretary have, have uh, insisted and focused upon uh, one aspect and that is zero casualty or minimal casualty. And that is, that is something we are all working on. The NDRF is certainly working on, very hard on this. Oh, yes. And, you know, sir, you, you, you are obviously uh, in the center, the helm of everything. You know, we must not undermine the kind of effort you, your men actually have put in in extraordinary circumstances. Right now, we are in the middle of a pandemic. We are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic. So how does this change our preparation? It's a tough one. Uh, it's a it's a double whammy, as I call it. Uh, it's a it's a disaster within a disaster. Uh, but uh, we must remember that the context of this bigger epidemiological disaster was already existing uh, a year ago when we were tackling Amphan or uh, Nisarg or the cyclone Burevi and Nevar in the south. So we were uh, we are in a way experienced now. Uh, we are uh, we have got the hang of it uh, literally and uh, uh, more more importantly we have ensured that all our uh, all our uh, uh, ndrf personnel are vaccinated uh, double dosed they are uh, they have uh, special apparel uh, head headgear which is special uh, apparel which is special medicinal kits which are special and also uh, they are uh, they are accompanied by medics and doctors wherever possible and uh, they also have telemedicine facilities so that they can call back their battalions in case they feel um, feverish or uh, any other uh, problems arise. And having said that, uh, the first uh, first uh, duty for uh, of our rescuers is to the rescued, to the public at large. And uh, we don't have the option of saying that uh, since a village is infected by COVID or the majority of a village is infected by COVID, it, we will not do the rescue act in a cyclone situation. That is not an option. That that is something that we don't think about. That is a risk we uh, take it in, take it in our stride. So we are well prepared, both for the COVID uh, challenge as well as for the cyclone challenge. And you know, sir, I as we are having this conversation, I was just reading this update that has come in from the IMD that actually does say that this possibly could be a severe cyclonic storm with a lot of wind speed. Now, when a situation is as developing as this, sir, what really are the challenges? I mean, how do you actually tackle on this cyclonic situation head on? What goes on in your mind? How many control rooms are working? How do you people coordinate with, you know, each state, each control room set up for the help that they might require? Uh, Deepti, we are we are connected uh, from uh, the ground up to the, uh, the national control room at the disaster management headquarters or the NDRF headquarters, and uh, I can uh, literally be able to speak as DG of NDRF to my last operative on ground anywhere in the country if he's operating and if he has if he has even set up a sat satellite network which is standalone. 
which uh, does not depend on any other network. It is our standalone network, which uh, is self-sufficient. Even if the entire mobile uh, connection connectivity collapses, we are able to uh, connect with each other. So that is that is uh, the technology part. We are also equipped with very very sophisticated equipment, uh, which uh, take care of uh, both the uh, you know the evacuation needs, the clearance needs, the maintenance needs of the electric electric grid, the, uh, the telephone grid, the water supply grid, etc. So we are ready for. Uh, the before, during, and after uh, phases of a disaster in a very complete manner, apart from the communication itself. And as far as the priority that you asked about in this disaster and the learning, the learning is very simple, that in a disaster, you probably cannot control so much the destruction to infrastructure. Roads will be damaged, telephone poles will fall, electrical lines will be damaged, trees will fall, houses, kacha houses will be damaged, Probably not much can be done about it. Okay, resilient infrastructure can be created in the long run, but that is for the longer run or the medium run. In the short run, the best you should do is optimize on the saving of lives, the zero casualty approach or the minimal casualty approach. That is very, very critical. And that is the lesson that we have learned over the years. And that is why we are really focused this time that we must make good the zero casualty uh, target that has been given by the Prime Minister and the Honorable Home Minister. And I think, Mr. Pradhan, you've actually done much of that. You know, we've seen one after the other cyclones that the different uh, state governments have been able to deal with, with the help of the NDRF and the centre continuously monitoring everything. Now, you know, I, I know that this is a routine for you, but for, you know, for all of us, for people who are on the East Coast, people in Bengal, people in Orisha now today watching you here on Republic, what would you want to tell them, especially those who might be in the, um, you know, inundated areas, the low-lying areas that possibly could bear the larger brunt of this cyclonic storm? What is your message, sir, today going out to all of them? My message, Deepti, is very, very straightforward, and that is don't take any risk whatsoever. Even if you are reasonably confident that your house is fine, your house is strong enough, that you are smart enough... You, don't, you are not smarter than nature. Nobody is smarter than nature. We should be humble enough to understand that nature can transform into a uh, behemoth any time. Uh, we must remember that the cyclone Taute was, for the better part of the uh, prediction, uh, extreme uh, or very severe cyclone category. It turned into an extremely severe cyclone at the last moment, at the last 36 hours. And of course, when it landed, it had slept stepped down into a very severe cyclone but it had speeds of 190 kilometers per hour that did a serious damage similarly when we did not heed in some cases the people did not heed the warnings of evacuating and going to safer places lives were lost so the first and the only message for me is for, for the from my side to the people of this country and people who are going to be impacted villages and citizens who are going to be impacted is don't take any chance it's a matter of few days of discomfort in a cyclone shelter temporarily, or the choices between this temporary discomfort and possible death. I don't think it's, I, I think it's a no-brainer. There is no choice, no clarity, no lack of clarity in this. It's a no-brainer. You have to choose between temporary discomfort and possible death. And I, I think any wise person uh, would do uh, the former. So I think you should listen to and heed the authorities, cooperate with the administration, the NDRF, and evacuate to safer places. As, as they say in Hindi, Jan Bachi to Lakho Pai. So we must save ourselves, save our, save our uh, kith and kin, and then we can always come back and take care of the, of the property. The government is in, in any case going to compensate for the damaged property. Yes, and those are words of good advice. Advice we all need right now. And as they always said, you know, Mr. Pradhan, that the only thing certain in life is uncertainty. But there are ways now to deal with that uncertainty. It's something that the NDRF has been doing for so long, sir. We wish you all the best and your men who are on ground zero. And we look forward to talking to you again, sir, perhaps in the course of the day today or tomorrow as we'll be looking at the NDRF literally stepping up all kind of efforts to ensure that there are zero casualties. Mr. Pradhan, sir, thank you so much for your time here on Republic. Thank you. Thank you, Dipti.